everyone, Steve Crosby here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk about the question, is it dynamic praise and worship or is it manipulation? I'm a musician, I play one instrument very well, another not quite as well, and a couple others kind of marginally. I've been born and bred and raised a charismatic believer, been a worship leader for over 35 years. I understand uh, a little bit, but the difficulty is discerning sometimes what is the anointing and what is we're just like a song and it's, it strikes us emotionally some way. You know, at Calvary, there was a lot of anointing, but not the kind that we would normally expect in our modern praise and worship services. When Ananias and Sapphira were being uh, extinguished, there was a lot of anointing, but not the kind that we would normally appreciate in a charismatic worship service. When Paul was disciplining the Corinthian church, there was a lot of anointing, but not the kind that would be welcome in a typical charismatic worship service. This matter has to be seriously re-examined. I'm all for passionate praise and worship. I'm pro the arts. I'm in favor of the arts, in favor of dance, mime. Some of my closest friends are called and gifted and anointed in the arts, praise and worship. But in a typical gathering, in an evangelical or even in a charismatic church, Normally we spend better than half of our time together trying to reach some sort of spiritual state of something. The Old Testament says that God inhabits the praises of his people. But the New Testament says God inhabits his people. The change from the old to the new has many implications. And this is just one of them. Just because a song moves me doesn't necessarily mean God's in it or not in it. It just means it moves me. It might be fine, might not be fine. But we do not have to spend 45 or 50 or 60 minutes, sing a bunch of fast songs, wait a minute, sing a bunch of slow songs to come into the presence. We bring the presence of God with us when we gather. We are presenced by the indwelling Holy Spirit. And when presenced ones, you and I and others, get together, there's a presence. We don't have to sing for it, don't have to shout for it, don't have to dance for it. I don't sing and worship to create a presence. I sing because I'm presenced. I sing in response to what's been done for me in me and through me, not to create an atmosphere for God to do something. The notion that you and I have to go through certain exercises, certain spiritual exercises, to get a distant God to come and visit with us is really a pagan and idolatrous concept. It is no different than somebody bringing you know, a, a, a basket of fruit to an idol, hoping that that, uh, that God, that distant God, will be favorably disposed and manifests himself or itself in some measurable way. This doesn't mean that there are some types of music that are holy and some that aren't, you know, the, the, the worship wars. We don't, need to, we don't need to go there. But if we, we don't sing in a meeting, you know, you haven't missed anything, you haven't violated a spiritual protocol, what about come before his presence with singing? Look, again, Old Covenant. I'm always before his presence. Is it appropriate to bring thanksgiving and singing? Of course it is. Get this, though. In response to what he has done for us and in us, not to condition him to do something for us. Jesus has accomplished 
all that is necessary for life in godliness. We have to believe. We don't have to sing and carry on. Singing is a wonderful privilege of a soul that's set free. If this topic interests you, we actually have an article on our blog about this topic, and the link should be popping up right about now. Check it out. And if you're interested in other materials, please stop by at stevecrosby.com and at the blog, which is www.sortofthekingdom.com. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you the next time.